Lieutenant Carrillo, you were one of the first people to uh, come in contact with Richard Ramirez after his apprehension. Uh, tell me something about your impressions uh, being, for the first time, close within touching distance of this guy uh, after after all this time of terror that he that he put. It, what did you feel? How did you react to that? It wasn't uh, wasn't time to react. It's kind of like a. I felt like a professional boxer or a professional athlete, where the hype is built up for the for the fight or game day, and you've talked and what you're going to do to this individual when you get inside, in the in the boxing ring you, you're going to beat him, you're going to hit him, you know what you got to do, and you may badmouth each other publicly, but it's all gone when you step into the ring. It's now game day. It's you put your game face on. All the talking is stopped. So the realities are the morning of August 31st, 1985, knowing that my stomach is nervous, it's upset, hey, this is the guy, this is, it's game day. But once you walk into that room, everything else is forgotten. It isn't this vile, evil, satanic, worshiping, maniacal beast. You break it down to its simplest form, He's a human being sitting across the table from you. It's game time. I know what I've got to do. My job is to get him to open up, to get him to talk, divorce myself and any personal feelings I have, throw them all out the door, forget about what those victims suffered. My job is to have an infinite amount of understanding, not condoning understanding that he did it for a reason. He was driven by some reason. Just understand it. I don't condone it. And then listening. Be able to ask him questions, but more important, the questions, being able to listen to what he has to say. So that's what, that's the way it started off. He immediately, uh, my partner went in there and immediately advised him of his constitutional rights per Miranda, and he immediately invoked his rights said he wanted an attorney. He said, okay, we'll see you. Closed our notebooks. We said, got nothing more to say. We started to get up and walk out. And he said, well, wait a minute, what's going to happen now? And he started asking us questions. Well, you know, you know we can't uh, ask you questions about this. And, you know, you want to talk to us? They said, yeah, you want to talk to us. We knew then we could use nothing of what he said against him in a court of law in the case in chief. But if it ever got down to it and Richard took the stand, whatever he told us in that room could be used against him in rebuttal. Right. You couldn't use okay. it as an investigative tool, but we could use it against him in rebuttal. So we started talking to him. And we talked to him, and Richard talked in the third person that time. Uh huh. He would sit there and say, Well, the Night Stalker would have done this, or the Night Stalker may have done this, the Stalker, the Stalker, he did this. And. I established a rapport with him rather than my partner because of the cultural yes, similarities. Yes, the, the connections, yeah. And so when I started talking to him, I started talking to him like he was a human. And I started talking like if he was from the streets. And I understood he was from the streets. You're from a barrio, I'm from a barrio. Right. So we established this rapport and we started going. And I said, why do you think the stalker let Maria Hernandez live. And it came out that because she looks strikingly like Richard's real sister. Ruth? Yeah. And I started talking to him about Ruth and about his dad. And I felt, I asked him, I said, did your dad molest your sister? And he was getting very upset. He was getting agitated. All the time, my questions, being probative, some light, some not, what I was doing was playing with him. I wanted to raise his anxiety level, see how high I could get it, bring it back down, so I knew where I could, his comfort zone was. And at one point in time, where game face kind of fell off, it's like being in the ring, 
and all of a sudden, you know, you're winning, and then you get sucker punched. You get, you never saw it coming. You get knocked down, knocked the wind out of you. Well, at one point in time, when I started talking about his family and his sister and his dad, Richard literally was like this on the table, and he started hyperventilating, and his arms started coming up. He was really getting angry. And for a millisecond, just for a millisecond, I'm saying to myself, holy shit, if this guy starts hovering and floating around this room, I'm out of here. You know, I can, I can fight somebody, but I can't be fighting the devil if he's floating around. This, right. this thing came in the back of my mind, and I said, okay, Rich, tell you what, let's, let's change the subject. I said, number one, are you hungry? Would you like something to eat? And he said, yeah. All this time, my partner was underneath the table. He was banging my leg, Mr. Salerno. Yeah. Now, Mr. Salerno was the guru. He was the big goomba, well-respected certainly by me and, and everybody else in the bureau. Sure. And he had worked on the Hillside Strangler. Well-known, got a name, he's the man. Well, he's banging me underneath the table, and I have a decision to make. Is he banging me, telling me to stop and bring him back down? Or was he telling me, keep going, you got him? Because I knew I had control. Right. I said, if he tells me, if he's telling me to stop and I don't stop, I'm going to hear about this. Right. I said, if he's telling me, keep going, I got him, I can bring him back up if I want. Yeah. But it's something we hadn't discussed. So I said, what do you say we get something to eat? You want something to eat? He said, yeah, I'd like that. Okay. I said, we're going to take a break. What do you want? So we sent out for some food for him. What did he want, do you know? Hamburger and fries. Okay. <laughs> and uh, so we got him some food. And when we went walking out of the room, my partner asked me, why did you stop? God, I was banging you. You had him going. You had him eating out of your hand. I said, well, we never discussed it, and I didn't know what you were telling me. I said, I can get him back up. You know, I'm not concerned about that. You know, I can get him back up. And we established that report. That was, that was day one. Okay. Yeah, that was day one. And wow. That's amazing.